Okay. Perez, Wilton makes a run ahead of it. Burkamp suddenly changed pace through the centre. It's Burkamp! That's magnificent! The move, and then this, which left Dabby's ass totally stranded. Would help if I wasn't watching it on the YouTube bit, wasn't it? I was about three seconds behind there. <laughs> well, good morning, good evening. Uh, I, I, I can't steal that. That's Craig's. How you doing, Dan? Good, dude. Uh, me or the people collectively? Well, if the people collectively are all named Dan, then, then I guess I'm asking the people collectively. But I uh, I asked you, my friend. I am. Um, oh, I've always said and. <clears throat> I've got my my, my oh, I've got something cooking in the background. It's uh, it's not good. It's going to make a noise later. It's a dead chicken. I'm very good, Mike. How are you? I'm doing all right. I'm doing all right. Uh, hello, chat. Check in. Let us know that you're here uh, for for this second episode of Sunday Roast. Um, so I counted this time the intro thing. What is it? A countdown from thirty-five. Only because we have consecutive numbers, 1 to 35 in kit numbers next season. I doubt we make it past 17. Yeah, I was going to say 16 of those 35 I counted are no longer with the, with yeah. the club. So uh, so it's fairly obsolete. But uh, but this is Sunday Roast. Nice Sunday evening uh, chat uh, between two twins. Although, uh, you know, I, I still it's, it's been two weeks since I shove and... Um, I'm just doing this to flex that I actually can grow hair. It just doesn't grow in evenly all throughout. So, uh, do you hate the shaving part of it? I don't enjoy it, um, mostly just because it takes time. I don't, I don't mind the physical action of it. In fact, it's kind of, it feels kind of cool. But I don't like anything that wastes 15 to 20 minutes of my time, and uh, you know, I never had to do before. So, in any case, what are you, what are you dealing with now? <laughs> This uh, the skull candy do versions. You don't use the Manscaped thing. You don't. You, you no, don't use what every other not. podcast has as their sponsor. Is no, that, that went straight on eBay. Got eighty-five quid for it. Everyone's a winner. And then you <laughs> does that. Not a nice sound. And then when it's when it's uh, you've been doing it for five minutes, have a thing of water, dip it in the water. All the hairs come out. Unbelievable. I know, but it actually, and these are about thirty quid. I've got two of them, and they have got an hour, uh, an hour and a half's charge. And this always, will do the whole of your head in about five minutes. I always pictured you having a team of people that did this for you. Uh, oh, bloody wish. I don't see anyone anymore. My mother doesn't come over. She's abandoned me. Jean's mum's ill. She's at her place with uh, um, the tummy bug that I had for eight, eight fucking days. And then, and then uh, my mum is uh, oh, she's just not here. She was meant to come over. That's my. I'm cooking a roast for the first time in my life, and I'm. Are you doing that in honor of the show? No, I'm doing it because my mum didn't come over and put it in the fucking oven like she was meant to. Oh, we've got a new name here. So it would be said to Loki. And the Irish Beast. What three clubs are going down this year? Well. Do you want to answer that? Um, yes, because I actually know uh, the clubs that are going down. Okay. I, have, I have it all figured out. Uh, before I answer that, though, I do just want to say I need to not watch games live more because yesterday – I was uh, on a visit down to my son's future uni, All right. college as we call it here, and uh, we did have about an hour break, so I was able to watch like the end of the first half, beginning uh, to actually the entire second half, but what a performance. Just as long as we're going to cover a little bit of Arsenal here, uh, what a performance uh, from, from, from the lads, and uh you know, we don't really break down the game in this podcast. You had plenty of time yesterday to watch Burkamp Wonderland and get that if you wanted to. But uh, but I got to say, I'm uh, I'm pretty excited. Are you trusting the process right now? Uh, I did. I trusted the process anyway. It was just a matter of time of getting everybody to believe and getting a settled squad. And uh, he we were one player away from our perfect time, best eleven there. Um, I think so. Would um, Martin? No, we were two players away. Cedric at right back was shouldn't be there, and uh, Martin Ellis should be playing a striker. And I think we'll see that sooner rather than later because Lacazette showed that he he can't set up goals, he can't score. He is so rusty from playing in that job that he's that role he's doing, and it's wearing him out. 
So it's uh, it's really hard for him. It's and aggravating Martin. because he's 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 given it everything he's got. It's just that mm. at some point what he's got is 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 suspect. Uh, yep, not so enough. What, so what three teams are going down? Uh, I actually think Norwich City is going to pull a rabbit out of the hat. I uh, if they did. They're dead bottom right now, but they've shown some life in recent weeks, even even in losses. So uh, I think Watford's just Watford's going to finish dead last by the end of I this. Watford. I do too. It's time for them to go back down. Troy Dini yeah. can't help you now. No. Um, Burnley, I think is is I'd love for them to go down. A lot of people picked them to go down when we did the we we got a lot of picks on kind of top four, bottom three when we did the charity uh, the twenty four hour podcast, the first twenty four hour podcast. Um, and Burnley was on a lot of people's tongues, um, which probably doesn't taste very good. But so I think Burnley is going down. God, I'd love to say Everton and Newcastle. I would love for those two to go down, but uh, I think it'd ultimately be Burnley, Leeds, and Leeds, Watford. Leeds and Watford. Leeds is only five points out of the uh, out of the yeah, drop Leeds, zone. Leeds are on fire in the in the wrong way. They're on fire like a sinking ship. But it's not going to be Newcastle. It's not going to be Everton, is it? Uh, Brentford could get dragged into it. Palace won't. Villa won't. Leicester won't. So it's between Brentford. Leeds, Watford, Burnley, and Norwich. So I'd say it's definitely going to be Burnley and, and Watford because they've got nothing. But they can Burnley won 3 0 yesterday, didn't they? They beat Brighton 3 0 away. Yeah. Unreal. Their second win of the season. You just don't know. It, the, the Premier League is just one of those weird things. Uh, so the way the Sunday Roast works is we have uh, very little to talk about. Um, and if you don't give us subjects to talk about, uh, we'll just talk about absolute what? Bullshit, right? nonsense our week I'll tell you my uh, chicken story yeah no one wants to know there, there's no one that we want to know more about how you spent your week off camera which is like four hours a day each day than danny the gfp so uh so since we last saw each other when we talked about the olympics we talked about our favorite music uh what are we else do? Right, films sports films sports our favorite song that's those are the kinds of things you can bring up and uh, and make it as Arsenal related or as completely non Arsenal related as you want. Um, the highlights of your week, give me a few. <laughs> well, I got ill last uh, a week Thursday. I got a stomach bug. I checked it on uh, Duck Duck Go, and Duck Duck Go said it should be between two and eight days. No, my luck. I got the full eight fucking days, in one end, out the other. I was an oxtail. Do you know what oxtail soup is? I don't, but it sounds like something that would make me want to know. Minestrone soup is. Oh, yes. And it's, it's brown minestrone soup for eight days. Oh. And then I got these. Uh, my mum was here on Thursday when she abandoned me. She usually comes around a couple of times a week. And I got yeah, but ever tablets. since we met, ever since I met your mom, though, she's uh, she's been raising money to get a flight over here, I think. I wouldn't be surprised. She and I found me. these tablets. She these are diet. Diarrhea relief caps, capsules used by date August 2017. So I said to my mum, how many of these should I take? This is on Thursday afternoon. She said, uh, probably take a couple. I took a couple Thursday afternoon. I had my first poo this afternoon. Now, now I normal. joked I joked before last week's show, our premiere show, and uh, that, that we'd be talking about colonoscopies. But, but that was a joke. I think we're getting closer to that than we actually thought that. When I was last in hospital, I mean, I'm never in hospital, but I went in because I took a tablet and the tablet got stuck and burnt a hole in my innards, in my so intestine. What, so, when, so when you weren't shitting, what, what did you do this week? I, there was some chicken involved this week? Yeah, I, on Thursday, when my mum was here, I had my shopping delivered and uh, oh, here we go, Matt's here. Uh, oh, for fuck's sake, a tune in, Danny's talking about shit. <laughs> I'm trying to steer the conversation away from that, but you know. And how are you getting on with that? Not so well. <laughs> not so good uh so i had all my shopping delivered i had a, a pre-cooked damn um, chicken which is lovely um, my mum chopped that out for me because i won't touch her i won't eat meat if it's off of a dead animal i don't mind if it does if, as long as it fits off the bone i don't eat stuff off of a bone do you touch it while it's raw because we have a oh, bit we, my wife okay. and i have massive fights over that you've got two kitchens i mean yeah one no. for <laughs> one for raw Andy meat we have two did. air fryers but but not two kitchens <laughs> I'll she calls. She calls. You know, you can get uh, food poisoning called salmonella from oh, raw. I know about chicken. that. She calls raw chicken salmonella. Like she doesn't. <laughs> she doesn't understand. I mean, she does understand, but she doesn't seem to understand that salmonella can be present in spoiled chicken. She just calls the raw chicken 
salmonella. She's like, get the salmonella off the counter. <laughs> so um, I don't like it. I've had to anyway. So the, and then I thought because I, I, I'm on a diet, as you as you as you all know, and I've had nothing. No, I've one bag of crisps every two weeks. Are we going to compete? Are we going to have a diet off? Because I've, I've well, been I've, on a, a very firm diet for the last uh, 16 days. Well, I don't know how much I weigh, and you don't know how much you, you probably do. Oh, I've been I, on track it. I track it. I'm spreadsheeting that, that oh, shit. Right you now. shouldn't do that. You shouldn't, shouldn't have a target, and you shouldn't have a goal. Just just change your lifestyle. It's a lot easier. My anyway. target is to not die soon, uh, and, uh, yes. and I'm doing fairly well so far in a limited uh, 20 pounds in, in 18 days. 16 or 18 days. It's uh, 18 days. 20 pounds lost. That is a stone. That's 1.4 stone. Oh, that's very good. Well done. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's easy. I still look I mean, fat as shit, but, but... It's easy for me because I don't drink and I don't really like food. So the chickens arrived. My mum pulled one apart. All the brown meat is in a bowl in the bottom of the fridge. It's George was meant to come. Sean's mum was meant to come and pick up, but she's been ill, so it's been there and she won't eat it now. So the cats will get that. And there was another one, a, um, a, re a whole chicken ready to cook. And so my mum left it in, in the, the, the second level of the bottom of the fridge. And so I went to get it out today, picked it up, dropped it, picked it up, dropped it, picked it up a third time, managed to get it on my lap. When I put it, went take the bag off of it and put it in the oven, and then so salmonella juice all over my hands. So I managed to. Uh, put them. I got antibacterial wipes for that, and then I, I put it in the oven. I've never cooked a chicken before in my life, so it said on the back of the packet you cook it for an hour and fifteen minutes, one hundred and seventy degrees, and then you get all the juices that have come out of it that it's, it's cooked in brown sugar or something. And I thought, well, they're no good. They're either, or they're all in the bag at the bottom of the bag because the whole thing was upside down. So they're not fucking carrying in it. So I'll just put the whole thing on for, a, for an hour and 40 minutes. So when it, when it finishes cooking, you'll hear beep, 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 beep for a minute. I'm not going in there to turn the beeper off. So the gist is my first ever chicken is going to be slightly overdone. We have no juices, just raw chicken. <laughs> See, you need to get, do they have, um, now, now I've learned about certain cookware, uh, in my time of podcasting, such as uh, stop microwaving water and use a, uh, a proper kettle or an improper kettle, but a kettle nonetheless. Your three hour to boil kettle. It'd be quicker if you put this water out in the sun. It's, it's three hours when I have it this full, but when it gets down to here, it's, uh, it's, it's too a minutes. teaspoon is done in mere minutes. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's all. That's, uh, that's all I need. Um, but uh, an air fryer. Do they have air fryers over there? Have, has yeah, it become popular? Do, I think I bought one because um, that is the so one of my coworkers told me about an air fryer a few years ago, and he swore by it. And I never heard of it before. And I bought one, and and it looks like a spaceship getting ready to take off. Also, according to my wife, uh, but uh, I, I cook everything in there. It is impossible to screw something up in there. You just you throw it in there, you turn it on, and you open it every once in a while, and it cooks perfectly. So. And you can end, you, you know, if you really wanted to, you could cook it right there at the desk. I mean, you, you'd never have to leave that desk and go into that kitchen. Well, I do like them, but I can't, I, I'd have to have it so low down. I mean, I wouldn't be able to take the lid off. I'd end up dropping the lid on myself and having burnt testicles and nobody needs that. So everything I do, I do it in, in the oven. And I have a little, you know, when you cook bacon, you have that griddle that the bacon sits on. I've got one of them in my oven, in my oven pan. Oh, so I everything sits on top of that. You know, I miss if I cra if I crash off this diet, it's going to be because I'm eating a whole the whole. You can eat bacon; fat's good for you. No, I'm not. not I'm on a, a a very calorie restricted diet. It's not one of those just don't have carbs things. So, you know, we'll we'll see. We'll see. Uh, I've got so, some uh, Matt, Matt asked Luke, a question in the chat. And yeah, I'm but gonna, Luke is a... I'm going to amaze him. I'm going to amaze him. Well, I'm not going to amaze you. You know, when I do stuff, I don't usually tend to do it by halves, do I? I, I often regularly go way over the top on it. So now oh, you're thinking, yeah. what could it be? So Matt's question was, uh, where are you, Matt? Uh, ah, Lucas Aid Sport. Have you tried that for getting over it? Now, here's my answer to that. <laughs> that is £110 worth of Lucas Aid Sport. Each one of those has got 24 bottles in, and there's 24 bottles on the table as well. Now, the question, the question, Danny. Yeah. Is yeah. it the fizzy one or the non-fizzy one? Well, of course it's fucking fizzy. I'm not an animal. So so what is – there's Lucozade Sport and there's Lucozade – one of them is 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 not fizzy. The other one is. Yeah. And I don't I know. I, I, oh, I no, it's made... not – Mine isn't Lucozade Sport. It's Lucozade Zero. 
I can take that off now. But you can't buy it in the shops in, in the UK anymore. I've not been able to find it for a year. So these are the bottles. LucasAid Zero. If you want to sponsor me, LucasAid, I was in direct contact with the company. I said, why can't I buy your LucasAid Zero anymore, the orange? I love it more than life itself. Surely you can buy it from us. I look on their website, 110 quid's worth. Lovely jubbly. Uh, and I drink two or three bottles a day. Oh, I thought you were but, saying the combined weight of those were, were, was 110 pounds. No, 110 pounds, 117 pounds 50 to buy it. Yeah, well, yeah. there's nothing like stocking up on stuff that doesn't go bad. Uh, and, and and again, this is the theme of this episode is things I do that my wife hates. Uh, she can't stand when I overbuy things, even though yeah, even though they they uh, they don't go bad, and we have plenty of room for them. Yeah, no, I, I, the reason I'm asking about the fizzy one and the non fizzy one is because one of the things, other than crunchy bars and, uh, and and lamb ribs every three doors down on Blackstock Road and or whatever wherever I'm staying, is Lucas A. Uh, the first thing I do when I go to the Arsenal Food and Wine Shop on Gillespie, is to to grab a bunch of Lucas A. Sport. One time, oh, it's I think it's Lucas A. Energy maybe that's fizzy. One of the times I meant to buy Lucas 8 Sport, I bought Lucas 8. It was late at night. I was drunk. We were in Brighton, and I needed something to keep me hydrated, and I bought the wrong kind. So in the middle of the night, I'm gulping down fizzy liquid, which was not a great don't idea. Don't say fizzy in that tone of voice. And the only thing I don't drink, I drink that isn't fizzy is coffee. And if Pardon I could me. fizz that fucker, I'd fizz it. Everything's fizzy that I drink. I'm full of fizz. Well, no wonder you have... You know, you have gas issues all the time. Uh, how, I never, ever burp. I never fart unless I'm ill. And I also don't spit, which I'm watching a load of footballers spit. Yeah, I heard, I heard, I, I, I heard you on Twitter saying. <laughs> Why do people constantly spit? Dirty fuckers. Especially in this, this day and age of uh, the COVID ding-dongs everywhere. Can, uh, can I pose a potential reason why you don't spit and they do? Go on. <laughs> when when uh, when one runs around no. for for extended periods of time, one lost me. Salivary glands begin to produce excess. Do they? And and you know, I know that 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 those like you yourself and myself who are extremely sedentary wouldn't wouldn't have that same issue. But <laughs> uh, but football. That word you know, sedentary sounds like it's an insult. <laughs> it, it, it 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 is. But I mean, you know, look, you can, you, you don't. I'm not saying anyone can help it. I, I can help it, uh, but yeah, the uh, the the I have to teach you about salivary glands now. Apparently, will you be charging? Uh, I'm always charging. How do you think oh. I? Uh, how do you think I got to where I am today? Uh, well, charging eating too much, drinking too much, and not enough exercise. I think that's how you got where you are today. <laughs> All right, I've got I've got a question in here. Um, the Irish beast, who I think is in australia says uh what what do you make of the foden incident really disgusting and uh, any and any good news and good news australia has reopened to everybody like i'm ever going to go to australia or canada both of those places they are under full mugabe lockdown if you listen to the tuesday club you'll know what that is um you've been to australia or canada I have been to Canada, uh, although the part of Canada I've been to, other than airports flying through, is Quebec, which is kind of not Canada, Canada. Uh, it's uh, French Canada, and I absolutely love the city of Quebec. I, I don't. I think I actually talked about it last week when we were talking about the Duran Duran concert. But the city is incredible. It's like it's like budget Paris, but much closer for for us. And, and not uh, turds everywhere. Yeah, I mean it. It's. It, it feels like Paris, and then it's also not as far for for Yanks like myself. Is so Vancouver the French bit then? Uh, no, the the French bit is is Quebec, uh, yeah. includes Montreal. The Vancouver's all the way like right by Seattle. It's just north of Seattle. It's in British Columbia, as a across matter. from the it's, Niagara Falls. It's British Columbia. How can you not know where Vancouver? I think that's where Stan the Man is uh, is from, as a matter of fact. He, he may well be. Uh, he's turned his tracker off, so I don't know where he is. So, did you hear what happened to Phil Foden? Uh, I, I, I heard Foden. what happened was mom. Uh, yeah, I saw a very like this, this is good because if you if you want to shed some more light on an Irish, I, all I saw was a video, and I saw it in the middle of the night. I was sleepy. It looked like a woman getting hit, which is never okay. Um, and 
than a kind of a, a what a Donny Brook. It was more than handbags because punches were actually being thrown, um, and I couldn't see who Phil Foden was of that group and what he started or didn't start. So, so tell me what you know about it. Uh, everything I've heard, he was simply defending his his mum. Yeah, I think that was there. I just saw the vid the video on the Daily Mail, and it was a uh, apparently he was in his dressing. He was in a, a dressing room or a room after the um that Amir Khan fight. Who is is an absolute dickhead. I don't know who the other bloke was. I don't watch boxing. I don't, the other bloke pugilism. was the winner. Pugilism is for the peasants. It's MMA I used to watch, and uh, so they were chanting outside of his room, calling him a C word and calling him the uh, the F word. I think we have to say, which in your country is the F word. In our country, it's just meatballs in a tin with gravy. Did you know that? Oh, you're not talking about the one that uh, describes cigarettes, then, are you? Yeah, faggots in this country are a tin. They're like um, like Italian meatballs. They're about that big. And you get them in a you get them in a tin full of thick gravy, and then you cook them and eat them. They're disgusting. Well, well I, I, I thought it described a uh, a cigarette, but I I don't yeah. I, no, it I probably not, does. Yeah, not a fan but of beet. that word at all. So so all right. So they were calling him that. Yes, yeah, so you know, like um, Leighton Baines, his surname. If you do that, and then the F word, it will bring you up a big tin of of those disgusting mashed up shit balls. Uh, yeah. So then they're calling him names. So his mum comes out the door and says, "Oi, what are you saying?" And then they go for her. And then so he um, his he, mom he goes young. to defend his mom. I, I keep forgetting that his mom is probably younger than I am. <laughs> <laughs> his granddad's probably your age. Like when I think of some, like you know, oh, he punched my mom. Like 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 I think you know, it's some seventy one. Yeah, she's probably woman. forty. Now, now, mind you, I'm not suggesting that punching a woman is okay at any age. In fact, quite the opposite. It, it doesn't matter. I just you know, I when I first saw the video, I did not know that that was his mom. I saw somebody that looked approximately the same age as i am or maybe even a little bit younger but then i learned the context of it and uh bang out of order man uh so i mean in that situation anything that foden did short of of you know hitting the guy once he was unconscious or 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 murdering the guy i think would have been understandable no am i missing any context to this um i don't think you are i think that's about the gist of it i don't really care i mean and don't dislike his mum, but I dislike him immensely, mainly because of the sh wanky fucking haircut that he's got. <laughs> it doesn't take uh, much. I don't know how I haven't somehow fallen afoul of you in, in the five years that we've known each other because uh, it doesn't pity. take much. And I, <laughs> and we've had a lot of time together. So <laughs> I, can, I can see why Andy is uh, is no longer no longer your friend. <laughs> <laughs> apparently not i mean i keep i keep asking him are we still friends and and, and he just doesn't respond so. well, where's the rest of your fucking podcast they've all fun i mean my one are, are slackers at the best of times but at least i know where they are yeah we added three people to our podcast family over the last two years and like owen and jared fine and gentlemen owen aaron J jared and yeah owen uh aaron and J owen mike and jared and uh None of them could ever do a podcast. And and then there are times where I'm like that. Um, and so it's one of these things where if we want to do a podcast, somebody, whether it's me or, or otherwise, has to say, okay, we're doing a podcast. Who's available? And then I'm pretty much the only one that can set it up uh, because I have access to all the emails. So, again, we have that in common. Just stay so locked in all the time. Ultimately, yeah, if, if, if I want a podcast on our channel to exist, I – have to be part of it which i you know there are times i love podcasts right now, right now i'm i'm really focused on on actually <laughs> trying to get my 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 health together so you might not be seeing that many podcasts other than the, the open mic post game shows that we do oh well, that is sad no, but just it's just easy just don't eat i eat once a day today i had two jacket potatoes and a tin of tuna and that is all i will eat now until about eight o'clock tomorrow night yeah, no, that's but my my problem is I'm addicted to food. I oh, love the crave to take. Well, I mean, look, I've seen you buy sweets before, so don't tell me you never eat. You're just talking about actual meals. Yeah. You, you snack. Yeah. Oh, I could live on sweets, chocolate, and crisps, but then I'd just go, well, I'm not having them. It's easy. No, see, uh, see, I need I need bacon and and pork <laughs> and Chinese food, and I mean that that's what get that's what got me into this position. That and sitting in a chair all day every day. So I am doing. The opposites of those now, and and we'll see. I, I've 
I've lost what what's the most weight you've lost in one session of dieting? And I by that I I mean it could be a year long, but like consistently. I wouldn't know, I don't diet. So I've you never, never bothered you, going on never, the diet you've before. You've never been at a level and then said, Okay, I gotta get I gotta no. start a routine here and then ended up at a different level. No, I just stop eating. Well, that's not I just stop I just cut out the shit I shouldn't be eating. Then you need nutrients. <laughs> You need you need vitamin D. Dan, I'm gonna I'm gonna start doing a thing that's gonna it's gonna be the highlight of these shows from now. I'm gonna start talking like a Jewish mother. Dan, <laughs> you need to lose weight, but you you have to have the right amount of nutrients. You my mom doesn't. She just comes and smacks the food out of my hand and screams, "No fatty, no." You, you're gonna make yourself sick <laughs> by not eating, and then you're gonna be hungry, and you're gonna eat the wrong thing. You're gonna put crunchy bars in your pants so that people don't think <laughs> that you bought them is anyone else getting turned on by this because it's <laughs> that's what phil foden's mother sounds like surprisingly she's a jewish mother it makes it's weird is because she? phil foden is not jewish but his mother is um uh, yeah don I, I did i did keep look most of my I, I did a lot of uh journaling i guess video journaling of my what is it I, what did i call it the magic mike mystery tour while i was in london for a month and it is mostly eating and drinking it is, it is. I mean, that that's really what, eating, drinking, and celebrating, and screaming about Arsenal is pretty much all that it was. Um, and we put it to music, and it's four hours long. So uh, I bet you want to watch that from from start to end. Um, so any other questions? Any other topics that you want us to riff on? Um, I've got this to, to tie up a little, couple of loose ends. There you go. Oh, that you know, we you didn't have to put that up. I mean, you think you think that's bad? Look at that! Look at that! That's no, I was I wasn't I wasn't complaining about the visuals. I, I oh, look, I am. I know, look I know, at it. I know <laughs> you're not. I know you're that. not the you're not the snowflake that I am. But uh, what, whatever <laughs> the meaning of the word is, I don't need to see it on my screen. I bet I, I bet you look at the back of that packet and it would say a guaranteed minimum three percent meat. <laughs> Yeah. The rest of it is our souls and heroes. The, the first thing I think of when I see that is not actual meat. I think meat product comes to mind. Um, I think that Ooh. I think Mark's referring to my uh, to my Jewish mother voice. But uh, yes, man, you're doing it for Mark. Do you very do happy you, with it? Did we talk about car racing? Do you do you enjoy the F1? I'm watching the Daytona 500 right now, and it could not be more boring to me. I'm only watching it because it's a, supposed to be a big deal, and. I'm, I'm interested in who wins it, but my God, is it just cars going around in a circle? I don't get it. It is. Um, F1, it is I kind of understand, but not really. Hold on. I'm trying to. There we go. Upload short video. Good. Uh, I used to like Formula One, but then uh, Michael Schumacher ruined it. But he was a great driver of a great car. And then uh, he, Sebastian Vettel ruined it. By winning loads and loads in a row and then that little prick lewis hamilton ruined it by being an absolute dickhead i used to like him at mclaren I so you him. like you like the opposite you like you like parody you don't like when somebody just dominates something every yeah. year like manchester Kills city it. kind of yeah absolutely ruins it so i don't yeah. like it but I, I i like a bit of daytona because uh round and round and around they go up in the air bangity bang well the bangity bang, bang part i don't mind that i mean that but i I don't know. I, I I I don't get it. I don't understand how you can form such I, an I think attachment it's... to a person in a car. There's no localness of it unless you happen to like grow up in a city where this guy was, and then maybe you can root for him. But uh, good friend of the show, uh, Alonzo Spencer. Tech, uh, I saw a tweet from him on my timeline earlier today. He's He's way into this race, and he's rooting for Truex. What is it, uh, Martin Truex Jr.? I know the names because I, you know, I watch Sports Center and stuff. But uh, like, why? I'd lo- I want to. I would like to ask him why, and and I may just do that because the best way to find out the answer to something is to ask. Just as we're asking you to do in the chat um, is uh, is ask the questions. I've yeah, crash here. videos are cool. I mean, Don, if it, do you also like? Hockey fights and murder videos. Who said that? Um, Don. Uh, I like crashes in racing. Give me a video. It gets a bit boring after a while. I mean, sometimes I've, I've watched Daytona a few times. If it's on now and I wasn't doing anything, now I've got two screens, so I'd have it on. 
But I think it's more than just the sit at home and watch round and round for 12 hours if you're going to go to it because it's a whole family occasion and you have all the barbecues and then and you apparently you have punch-ups, which I didn't know your lot did. I thought they were all too drunk to fight. Punch-ups in uh, at the family get-together? No, uh, the sporting events like the NFL. They said there was violence. Oh, they were oh, all yeah, fighting uh, each yeah, other. At, yeah, at the NFL, there's, there's tons of punch-ups. Uh, Not so much at other sports. You really don't see it that often. But it's like a part of the game almost at NFL is that the drunk fans are going to punch up, especially if it's a, a rivalry game like like the Eagles, who every single person in the chat was apparently a fan of last week. Uh, or Scumbags. Now. Yeah, do they – you you can't really spit when you're wearing a – I mean, it would just go right back in your face, wouldn't it? Either because of the helmet or the wind. Have you ever tried to spit out of a car and it just goes right back at you? I think he might have meant split, where they well, split. I'm sure he meant spit because of what you said earlier about about sporting uh, events where you spit. Oh, so. oh, because IndyCar did split. It split into um, two different championships, and then they uh, they they went there. They they come back together again. Oh, did he put a reply there? I don't know. Uh, fastest you've cool. ever driven? I got a good answer. Hundred sixty-ish. You first. You first. Um, you know, no, no, is that a certain sixty? kilometers or miles no, an hour? miles an hour look you clarify but then uh, um is this a tough question for you to answer danny me oh no i've told people plenty of time i i, I got done speeding i'm just adding a adding a event no i'm not not doing that yet fastest i ever done was um we have a uh, according to my sat nav and a code according to my road angel it was 152 mile an hour Coming from Huntington to Peterborough, my um, Floki will notice on the the four lane A one M. That's not very far though, is it? From Huntington, well, this to, is about a, about a ten mile stretch bit of road, four lanes all the way. Get it on the downhill bit, one hundred and fifty two. My car says one hundred and fifty five. This is in the 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 second and the third GFPs, but the convertible, the most I've had out of that was one hundred and one hundred and forty eight. Jeez. But then I was actually showing Frank and sexy Frank and Shao, and I was um, showing them it once, and then uh, this one I got done doing 102. Is, I, I was going to say, is there, is there a lot of police enforcement of speeding over there? Because I, I, you know, I, I don't. Well, they can't go catch on, you. I never go they on the motorways. Don't go that fast. I, I'm always, I'm always on, uh, on on a train. But when you when, when the train seems to be alongside a motorway, I don't really see cars. Uh, you know, people getting pulled over and police stops. Do they hide? Do, I mean, do, over here the 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 police generally have quotas of tickets that they have to give out for speeding and i've noticed it seems to be back down a little bit more in in recent years but that you know you would have to issue 20 tickets a month or something like that and so you'd have them spend part of their day in these hidden areas and you eventually kind of understand where they are but you can uh, you get caught sometimes and knock on wood it's been a long time since i've been caught but uh, but do they? I mean, is that a big thing over there, or is it just when you're blatantly going so far over the speed limit that that they? Get well, it? I was in 102, and I told them I needed the toilet, and there were no wheelchair toilets. This was 3 a.m. on New Year's morning. We're coming back from a party. I don't drink, so he said, "Well, I don't even have to breathalyze you." But I was doing 150, maybe 150, and then he saw me two miles before. Before he saw me two miles away, and he said, "I track tried to track you for two miles. The only time I caught you is when you slowed down. Don't speed." Don't speed, people. This was 2004 when you could get away with shit like that. sean has been done speeding twice because she's an idiot. And I say to her, don't speed. You won't get away with it. And plus, I was driving a a, a, a big old Mercedes with airbags. And yeah. most people don't have nice big cars like that. And your positive is 150, 160 miles per hour, not kilometers. We don't have KMH in this country. Why not? We don't, we have K. No, we don't. We don't have I kilometers guys, I, th I thought you lot used the metric system all the time. I gave a I gave an AFTV interview where I switched something over from miles to kilometers because I was you know I, I didn't want people you know yank this yank that on the thing even though I, I talk like this so I got it anyway but no um, miles an hour for absolutely everything over here we don't do kilometers the only, the only time you'll ever hear kilometers is if someone's running a marathon or Chris doing his I run ten k today and I ask him how much is that in English money we don't want any of that European surrender money now the questions coins. are starting to roll in a little bit so we're starting to lock them up but the fastest I ever drove. And I thought about this the other day because the destination was uh, the same place I went yesterday, which is my son's uni in James Madison, which is in um, Harrisonburg, Virginia. And I was in school in Charlottesville, Virginia at the time, which is about 
40, maybe 50 miles away. And it was 3 a.m. I was driving a girl home from Charlottesville to Harrisonburg in my mother's Honda Accord, which isn't kind of known as a sports car necessarily, but for some reason... It's not an aero deck. I mean, this is the stupid... This, if you had asked a different question, what's the stupidest thing you've ever done? I can't like answer that, that on here. That you're, lucky, that, that you're lucky enough to be alive. This would be one of two that would <laughs> fall, fall into that category. And this, and So I was 18. I had been drinking heavily. And I made the 50-hour trip in something like 35 minutes because maybe including the stop each way because uh, I, I was going about 120, 127. I've never won 50. Somewhere between 120, 130. And these are roads that are in the mountains and there's fog. I, I was going by tractor trailers or huge lorries, 18-wheel uh, lorries. Uh, oh, crash in the Daytona. I was going by them as though they were stopped and I was going 60 or 70 miles an hour. And they were all flickering their lights. They're like, I, I, I could have got jailed. I could have got a DUI. I could have gotten killed i could have killed someone else um none of it happened uh and i learned my lesson by never doing it again i never went over 110 ever again <laughs> but so how fast did you say you were going my cooker's beeping about 100 and I, it was like 135 140 i think somewhere in that in that range but 150 i've never done so props to you loki um and uh, and to everybody else that's beaten my record but uh yeah i won't be doing that anymore now i have uh you know children who i don't want to take after my bad habits so um any other questions or are you just gonna be muted because of your uh, oh, look, your I'm, I'm, I'm gonna mute it there you go i've just been doing something because well you know my my video of me taking alan the the unicorn to for a walk i got the other end of the of the video so uh, I just need to give it a quick check. But, yeah, it's, it's easy to speed in this country. There's so few police. Depends where you live. I mean, I've been done uh, – I've been chased quite a few times by the police, and they always slow down and they can never prove it because you live in the countryside. They can do whatever you want. I mean, I've not driven for 10 years on the 31st of J July this year. So it's 10 years since I've driven. And I'm in no hurry to drive again if I do manage to uh, get a vehicle that I can drive. Just, just bored of it. I used to fall asleep. Think, oh god, I don't want to have to drive. Get someone else to do it. I hate but driving long distances unless yeah. I'm completely jacked up on Red Bull or something like that. <laughs> yesterday, the the drive from where I live now to Harrisonburg, which for the, for the visit, it was it's an hour and fifty minutes or so. And um, I I was almost falling asleep after forty five minutes. We had to switch so Steph could drive boring. the rest of the way home. Just do -dum, do -dum, do -dum. And then if you've got people in the car with you, you can't listen to the stuff you want to listen to. Like want to listen to uh, LBC or talk radio. No, you couldn't oh, have if any I'm driving, I'm listening to whatever the hell I want. Yeah, uh, we'll get the ump, did not they? Matt Roberts says, uh, do your, both of your kids drive? Uh, are you, only one of yours is old enough to drive, isn't he? No. Uh, oh, no, the, well, the girl's the oldest. Yeah, Allie is 20. She, uh, I mean, my daughter, you get your license over here as early as... Uh, just past your 16th birthday 16 years and three months now in, in virginia um and she drove ever since then my son didn't get it till he was 17 didn't really need it um and you know but they both drive now but ali is in college and doesn't drive she doesn't have a car for the last three years because there's really no reason for her to have one but yeah they're they're old enough i mean i know i don't look old enough just like phil foden's mother <laughs> i don't i don't look old enough to uh to have a fully fledged adult child uh or two of them nonetheless but uh, but yeah they did i got married and had kids when i was 12. oh dear um and you have one daughter who, who drives right you actually mentioned yeah. that she john she uh passed her test that's one of the things i got her to do really early she passed here you can pass your test at 17 so she her birthday was the 29th of may and she passed her test on the 7 17th of december i think and uh, she has had two Volkswagen Golfs. The first one was a a black five door 1.6 turbo diesel. She had that for three years, and then she got rid of that. And now she has a black Golf five door one liter turbo petrol. And she's about to get rid of that, and she doesn't know what she's going to get because she hasn't got any fucking money. We just bought a car today. 
we, you we've, did. Had two, we've had two cars for three people at home for a long time, which has been fine because I've barely left the house in, in two years. I don't like to leave the house that often, but, um, but since we're buying a house in Florida and moving down there at, once it's built kind of gradually, we, uh, we're buying a convertible. So, um, yeah, Ford Mustang convertible, which was a compromise because, once again, uh, my wife and I had a difference of opinion on which car to get. It's amazing we're still married because, A, this, and, B, uh, we disagree on a lot of things, but we come to compromises, so that's how the 25 years has worked. But uh, the type of convertible she wanted to get was a little bit more than I wanted to spend given we're going to have two houses pretty soon. Did you say uh, you bought a uh, a Mustang? Mustang convertible, not like the muscle car version of it. Like we we've de muscle the nine hundred brake horsepower one. No, no, not the not the GT. It's it's the, the ordinary Mustang EcoBoost Premium. Uh, so it's a. I mean, it's it's a nice engine, but we're, I I I don't care about size like, engine. I don't. It's two point three. I don't. I know nothing about cars. Two point three liters, three hundred horsepower. It's not That's the so upgrade. It, 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 it's not like the super upgraded one. They had like some packages to upgrade it to where it'd probably be louder than uh, like the the nuclear bombs exploding on on Japan uh, were if you were standing right there. But no, I it, it's we're, we like de sportified it. She took the spoiler off. She doesn't want that. Uh, we got it white. Uh, rather than like red or some sort of flashy color, she doesn't like the the little horsies on it. So we got a package that like black darkens out the horses on the front. And the back. It's called debadging over here. I've took well, all it, it's not it's not debadge. It's just that they're black on a black grill, so they're harder to see instead of chrome on a black grill. Is so it a brand it, new car? It, it yeah, uh, we had to special order it because not that many of them are made with that black package because Mustangs. Ford loves the uh, the that pony, and uh, and we don't. So we have to order it. It's going to be about four months or so before it comes in. But we'll have it for most of the summer. And uh, and when we're down in Florida, the summer won't need it. We, I mean, the summer won't matter. We'll need it uh, year round. So, uh, so I can't wait to, to go 170 it? miles an hour. In. <laughs> have you managed to swindle a job for me so I can come over and live there um, in your granny hut? Because I hate living in the cold. I can think of a job that you could do. Is it porn? I'm not going to say that it's not. I'm not going to say it's porn. I'm not going to not say that it's porn. <laughs> so what color is your car? Oh, black. Uh, so, uh, the new one? Th see, the thing is, yeah, the new, new one one's black. White, huh? uh, which, again, I, I don't like white cars. Your car's white. It will be white with the black, the black retractable roof. I like a different color, but again, getting the Mustang as opposed to a BMW or or, or an Audi, and I know I'm sounding, I, I sound very posh right now, but but getting that was my win of the compromise. So the black on black, the so the you white, didn't want a Mercedes or an Audi. I didn't want to pay for a Mercedes or an Audi. See, that's what <laughs> I was going to say. Would, they're very nice. I would have loved one, but uh, people in the UK probably don't realise that when you're going to get a Mustang, when you get a nice one with a decent size engine like yours, and get the extras and convertible, it's probably only thirty thousand dollars or something. No, it's whereas yeah, it's more. It's more than that. Uh, I mean, you've got loads of stuff on it, but I mean, you can get them for about thirty thousand dollars, thirty thirty five thousand. But if you want to get the equivalent kind of car over here, a three hundred brake Audi or Mercedes BMW convertible. You're going to pay about 55, 60 grand for it. Well, the BMW and Audi convertibles were 60 grand, 60 to 65. Yeah, but that's American dollary dues. That's only about 10,000 pounds, I think. The conversion rate is five to one. <laughs> <laughs> five. Oh, I mean, I, I, if I was buying a brand new car now, I'd probably go for an Audi. I would never have a Mercedes. BMWs are driven by arseholes. And I don't like um, performance cars. I just go for. Probably go. For, in fact, I wouldn't even have. I'd have to have, to have two cars because uh, I'd like an, an old Audi RS6 Estate, the Avant one from about ten years ago. I wouldn't want a new car. I hate them. My dream car is the car I got on the driveway. I love my car. My car's amazing. It's very nice. It is. I like I the one that we drove in. That's a hot piece of property. Well, my van. <laughs> is that yeah, one you want about? Oh no! I mean, I want to take that to Daytona and drive it on the track. That van. 
my van's a two litre turbo diesel Volkswagen Charan. It's lovely, it's but it's uh, it's nice. It's it's uh, better than the one we had before. It's a an old turd of a vehicle that I hated. My grandmother would have rolled over in her grave if she knew that my last my last car that I leased, I leased it for three years and returned it, and then we just went down to having two cars for the three of us, was a BMW. And she was like, she's like, don't buy German cars. You know what they did to our ancestors. <laughs> and uh, so Mercedes was off, off limits. BMW was off limits. Uh, I feel like there's another model of, of German car that I'm not thinking of right now. But Audi. Oh yeah, well Audi, yeah, and um, and so now those are like the only ones I'm looking at. But we ended up with a Ford American. We, we now have a Ford and a Jeep. We have two American cars out of three, which we were always Japanese car people. We were always Honda. You wouldn't or... get me in a Japanese car to save my life. I fucking hate them. We have an Infinity. That's the one Japanese car. I think that's a Toyota, now, like a fancy Toyota. Do you want to see some cars? This is the car I got at the moment. Look at that. Absolute that's, fucking beast. It's exactly where it was when I last saw it. Oh, it's not. I've had all the I've had a new driveway per per it's got different wheels on it now. It's got proper it's AMG it's alloys on it. You've had a new driveway? Yeah. Oh. So the wheels are gone. What, 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 when I when I when I stepped under your driveway, did it like collapse under my weight? And it's, now you have to get a new it's an app. What's that noise? Fucking cat. Um, here is on the left hand on the right hand side is my very first Mercedes that's the GFE and then I crashed it into a lamppost and then the, the, the insurance company wrote it off and the bloke bought it from auction and said there's nothing wrong with it to put a new grill on it and so the one on the left is the GFP number two uh, same car different color and then I had a bit of a phase of buying Mercedes so you can see three of them here. <laughs> the first one is number five. The, the next one is number two. And the one in the background is number three. You know, I learned you should not put your license plate on uh, for, out for public consumption. Oh, good luck to them. Do what you want. Knock yourself out. I don't people care. Are gonna, people are going to be able to find out where you live now. Oh, I'll tell them where I, where I fucking live. <laughs> and uh, if you're thinking in that picture, you've got five, two, and three. Where's number four? There's number four. That's Big Bob driving it. This was a very rare two, 3.2 litre twin turbo, turbo Technics version. If I kept that now, that's a, about a 25,000 pound car. I had no Biggest... idea that's into cars. Oh, good God. I love cars. Look at you. But nothing beats But You can't tell. Oh, the, my registration isn't on any of these cars. The registration on that. Oh, there it is. N530 NRH. That convertible. How, how often were you? are you able to have the top down on that? In this country, never. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Looking. Three three days out of out of the year. <laughs> well, I drove it six times um, between number between uh, the, the number two and this number five, and uh, each time it was lovely. And then I had to get some body work done to it, and then I fucked my arm and then couldn't drive anymore. Sad yeah, story. I had to get body work done to myself. But oh, th there were some other questions I saw. I, I um, what was. Uh... Let me see here. So you're excited for your new car? I am, except it's four months away. You know, four months away from uh, from getting it. So uh, they do love Volvo's, Mark. You get a Volvo two four four estate and I, a seven sixty estate. I didn't notice that because uh, you know when I lived in St. John's Wood, I, I was surrounded by you know many of my fellow uh, Jewish people, and I don't really remember there being a ton of Volvos there. But that said, I didn't really notice any of the cars there because we didn't drive uh, oh don one no, no. question hey? uh, will oh, soccer some. slash football oh yeah i've got, got that saved is that where oh. you found it yeah okay go on uh we'll put it up because i can't because okay cause you, have to, you uh, have to control everything one question from matt d'souza and we've got this one here go on will soccer slash football ever be the number one sport in the u.s um well no. at certain levels it is isn't it youth level yeah well yeah, I mean, it depends on it, it, it. Obviously, depends on how you. If you're talking about fans' attendance, if you're talking about revenues, if you're talking about TV ratings, then it's far from that. I think it's corruption is when you know you've made it to the top. Yeah, we don't have enough. We there, there is some, uh, mostly at the national level rather than the than the club level, but I I just don't think so. And honestly, I think it's more because of the dominance of foreign leagues i'll tell you when it comes to oh, there's another 
crash. Oh, that was a that was a highlight of another crash. Ooh, a car went upside down. That's pretty cool. See, this I like. I could watch that. <laughs> the number 21 car, and it slowly goes up, and you can see, oh, and then it's riding on its oh, okay. So that's fun. Anyway, back to the question. The reason that baseball and hockey to a lesser extent and basketball and the NFL are so popular here is because there is no comparable. I mean, they, they, they live here. The sport lives here. And yes, baseball is also very popular and, and played a lot in Korea and Japan and, and, um, and, um, uh, Central America. Um, and you know, other sports do are played in other areas, but, the best league in the world is here, which is why Yanks t- tend to very obnoxiously call the championship the world championship, even though it's not. Uh, football, though, I mean, they're tr- it will always kind of be a secondary sport here, the professional league here. If there's a way of measuring how many people watch the game in general, including watching Mexican football, including watching European and South American and all that, then I think it's definitely on the rise. But in the sense that we're used to calling like a sport the number one sport, where I think the NFL is, generally speaking, considered the number one sport, I don't think it'll ever happen. And by ever, you I do. mean 100 years. I mean, who, who knows what's going to happen 100 years from now? But you said last last week that when someone said, could America win the World Cup? I said, never, ever going to happen. And you said you can see it happening Monday. Did I? Yeah. I don't remember saying, I, I, I don't remember answering that question, which was by design. Um, I could see it happening someday, but decades from now. I mean, think of some of the teams that have almost gotten to the final that were, you know, that were surprised. Yeah, you yeah, you'd normally have a one of the final four teams is normally a shock. I mean, I remember, I think Bulgaria got there one year. Um, Uruguay. Where is he? We're talking about Bulgaria, and he's not yeah. even bloody here. Get in here. Absolute shit. He's the reason we made this show. He was like, I'm, I'm not doing anything at eleven at, at, at midnight Bulgaria time on Sunday night. And now he's not here. A um, couple of other things that people have said. Uh, um, Loki was saying that he likes loved his BMWs. Well, there you go. That's my first car on the right, Renault Jeez, Clio. How many cars do you have? One for each? I mean, I you know. I regularly have two or three cars at a time because I like them. But how about on the right? Switch them all out. I mean. Well, I had those two at the same time for about six months, but my clear on the right is my first car. And on the left is a BMW 320 um, coupe. And uh, that got nicked. Some pikey stole it and set fire to it. And the clear was fucked by the time I gave it back. Here's a picture. That's me in the summer of 1992 because I still got L plates on. I had to drive everywhere. I didn't care about that. But uh, Nike Air Max Classic trainers. I've still got that chair now. That's when it used to fit me. I think I was wearing all of Matt's clothes there because I don't wear a necklace and I don't, I don't think I wear baseball caps. I, I'm but, fascinated uh, by younger pictures of you. I just always <laughs> you looking like you do now. It is. I've still got a pair of those purple Nike Air Max classics in my. Oh, they're called BW now. But that Clio was absolutely fucked off when I got rid of it. It was. Uh, I remember it was. Um, the uh, it was under warranty and the brakes and everything, so I was only allowed to do I don't know 10 15,000 miles a year. I mean, the first year we'd done all that lot, so before the first year was up, I went in and had new brake discs put in it and then went away. And then the next time I brought it back for new brake discs, I'd forgot that I'd unscrewed in a clear you could unscrew the, the speedo from the engine, and so the miles wouldn't go over. So I was doing shitload driving, we used to drive to Scotland and back a couple of times. And the bloke came up to me and he went, Uh, Mr. Sweetman, I said, Yeah, he went you do know that your car has done eight miles on a set of brakes. I said, ah, uh, he said, yeah, if you're going to disconnect the speeder, at least connect it a while before you bring it back to us for new brakes. <laughs> I drove all the way to Highbury and back once with no brakes, using the handbrake to slow us down and the automatic gearbox. That's the nineties for you. Fucking mental. I know. I barely drove in the nineties. Well, you were, uh, why not? Well, I was in school. Uh, no, that's not true. It was the. Uh, it was the. It was no. Actually, that that comment made no sense at all. <laughs> Sometimes I say things and then I think about it. And I'm like that. That isn't even true. It doesn't make sense, and it's not germane to the uh, conversation. So yeah. So I'm. Let, let's steer it back to Arsenal a little bit. All right. So what do you get? Two goals today. I stopped watching at halftime, or I stopped even paying attention at halftime. Three. You got. So he did get the third. Yeah. Uh, 
So now everybody's digging out Arsenal again. For... It'll do that. It'll do that for eighteen months. Get the hump and then have to leave, like uh, he did at Arsenal and Dortmund. I mean, there, there's this guy. There's this guy that posts in. There, there's a Facebook group. Uh, I think it's Arsenal Number One Hundred One or, or, or uh, Arsenal One Hundred One. I, I think it's called. And there's this one guy in this group that posts. I mean, he it's the largest, the biggest troll I've ever seen in my life. Like every single thing that's posted by this guy is anti-Arsenal. If it's giving up on Aubameyang, then it's, I mean, when, when he wasn't playing well, he was shit. But then when we got rid of him, Arsenal were shit for getting rid of him. And he waited and he waited. And then last week he said, yeah, we got rid of our, our, our second top goal scorer because he posts this, this, you know, Arsenal goals in all competition. And it was Smith Rowe with nine at the time, Aubameyang with seven, and then so on. And he's like, yeah, we let go of our second best goal scorer of the year. Explain to me why, you know, Arteta is supported or, or something like that. So I do a little bit of research. Of his seven goals, three came in the uh, – in the league cup in one in the game cup. <laughs> yeah it, it, it came against west brom in, in the league cup round two which is a which is a game and a level that we hadn't played in for like 20 years uh so we got those three goals so he's got four goals there's also a good way to split up the season which is you know in in the premier league games that we've played this year which is now what 22 uh or 23 he played in 13 of them and we scored 1.3 goals per game while he was in the lineup. And he and the ones he wasn't in, we've we've done 1.9 goals. So I point this out to him, and he's like, "Excuses, uh, <laughs> like, like excuses is statistics." It's, it's, I mean, there is a point that if we'd have had a different manager, he probably would have stayed. But it would have gone wrong in eventually anyway. No matter who the manager was, that's the kind of bloke he is. He if, wants to be the, the the special one in the team. And when you no longer play around him because he can no longer be bothered on the pitch, that's when things start going wrong. And he'll go. He'll love the adulation he's getting at Barcelona, scoring goals. It's piss easy league to play in. You've only got what three and a half teams playing in that league. The rest of them are Championship quality sides. Now maybe you've got about five, and the rest of them are piss poor teams. See, now, see now I've got a, I've, I've got another WhatsApp message from somebody else, who a lot of people would know who I'm talking about. But uh, washed up Abba, who's finished, gets a hat trick, crying emoji, like crying laughing emoji. Getting a hat trick in a game doesn't mean that you're world class anymore, uh, and it doesn't outweigh a season and a half of of not being good. In my mind, it's it it, it what it does is it re- when you start using those statistics, just as if he didn't he didn't score in the last game he played at all. Did people go talking about how, you know, oh I told you he he he'll never score again. I mean, it, uh, the bias is crazy. It's absolutely ridiculous. And one of the things I'm so excited for, and this is for absolutely no good reason, is the Arsenal finances are going to come out in the next couple of weeks. And the loss is going to be tremendous. And people are going to start making all sorts of ridiculous, incorrect assumptions about what it all means. And you will see who is using the information to fit their agenda. Whether that agenda is pro Kroenke or pro everything's okay, or whether it's anti Kroenke or anti Arteta, we're going to see a lot of uh, uh, amateur financial specialists coming out in the next few weeks trying to make heads or tails of it. But uh, And they're all going to be probably pretty wrong. You're probably so right. I've been, working on, uh, I've been working on my spreadsheets, comparing us to Chelsea and United and Liverpool and trying to learn, you know, what causes what and impact of covid so i will be uh, i'll be ready to discuss it from a financial standpoint when it happens but people are going to go crazy because our our loss from operations is going to be well over 100 million pounds well in my time i've already said it in my time as an arsenal fan since the that i can that i can qualify qualify and talk about is probably mid mid to late mid 80s onwards i've never known players to be given away ever can contracts cancelled that, that, that they've made public. Some have left on a free, maybe they were, but they weren't star players on huge contracts. And we've had, what, five or six say, well, we'll have to write your contract off. 
do do you do you see that as a sign of weakness or a sign of of finally getting together after a lot of bad decisions? I mean, yeah. there's so many different viewpoints on the the of contracts. You watch this summer, it, we're going to go huge like we did last summer, and you had to clear the decks, and a, a lot of that you can wipe off with uh, uh, financial amortization. Is it that will help a bit with that long term? or short term but we need new players and you can't have all these high earners there when you can have a kind of a bum young on 250 grand a week when for that amount of money you could get two fantastic players earning between them wouldn't be earning that much money yeah our highest wage earner right now is uh you like how we just we we, we just weave ourselves right back into arsenal <laughs> uh our highest wage earner now is thomas Partey, 200 a week and I th i'd be happy to let him go as well well, I, that, you, I don't see enough from him on a regular basis to be worth that kind of money. He should be uh, not the same style of player, but he should be as reliable as Patrick Vieira was. And like Gabriel is, is Gabriel and uh, Benny Blanco are reliable as, as Sol Campbell and Tony Adams. That not as quite, maybe not as good, but they are as reliable. They're always well, they're there. Part, they don't, they don't do them a Their partnership yeah. is, uh, I mean, one minute away from a clean sheet yesterday would have been what, like our thirteenth clean sheet of the season. Yeah, all but maybe one of them with the in two their of them first running. season together. Yeah, I mean that. That's it, all, those things take years to come together brilliantly. Yeah, so uh, so I like that. How many players do you estimate to come in? See, I, I, we are we we paid, and then this is just total transfer fees, nothing to do with amortization or how much the the, the wage bill changed. Although I could speak to that, um, one hundred and fifty or so million pounds on six players uh i could see us spending 180 million pounds on yeah. three players this, uh, well maybe not on three maybe in total but i can see us doing big money i just hope it isn't buying out contracts like um isaac uh he is not worth 70 80 90 million euros well no if they wanted to pay 75 mil 72 million for him they would have done it and mm. or 75 million they would have done it in january but well, they're having a poor season yeah, well, and I think I think over the summer, if he's still what we want, I think we'll have other options and the ability to to to, to maybe pay thirty five or forty for him, uh, which they wouldn't do then because well, Sociedad, I th are they having that bad of a season? They're about six or seventh, and I think they've won one game in the last five or one in six or some some number like that. They've not been good. Monreal isn't even playing for them anymore. He's there, but he's just not playing. There again, he's about 35, isn't he? Yeah, he's old AF. Should we have a uh, a palate cleanser? We've got a uh, I've made a um, people in the chat, you can vote. Put number one if you want the video of me meeting Mike, number two if you want the pit the video of me taking Alan for a walk. The extended version, Sean sent me the first 10 seconds, so rather than 10 seconds, it's 20. So one for meeting, two for Alan. You should. You should have. You should have. You, did you have the video of me doing the COVID test, or were you just taking pictures of that? Ah, oh, um, I think I know where that is. I had a video clip, and I'm gonna go and look for it. Um, oh, I know where it is. It's on my bloody YouTube, isn't it? The part where I'm, the part where I'm where I'm sticking the thing in my throat and crying yeah. and, and gagging. And <laughs> so it's one for me meeting Mike, or it's two for Alan. Who is that? A little bit of interaction here. Where is it? That's, oh, did I did I put it on our YouTube? Oh, yes, I did. Here it is. 49 seconds of Mike gagging, which you will take with you to the grave. Oh, it's amazing that stuff. Quickly stuff downloads now. Always constantly surprised. There you go. It's downloaded. And then Russ, I'll go back here. Russ, Holland. Oh, God. How? Okay. Let's. I mean, he's apparently part of a bidding war between Barcelona and Real Madrid. There's no reason to think he's not going to Spain. But how, like, invigorate that would would Holland coming be, kind of like when we signed Dennis Burkamp? Although Burkamp is coming. That be two off. cherries on the cake. He, he, I mean, Burkamp was had had an off year, but like was still a class player. I mean, would it be more stunning than that, or would it be? Because Burkamp well, coming was at a time where, where you know, it was before Thierry Henry. It was before. Well, Burkamp wasn't coming for goals, was he? It was coming to be the fulcrum of the, of the whole team. Whereas Haaland would be coming to do one thing, score goals. And Dortmund without Haaland are usually shit. They had a good win today. I think they won 6-2. And scoring, uh, I think Marco Royce got two goals, two assists, and man of the match in 10 out of 10. So only, only two people have voted which one they want. 
I know that, I, I know that the release clause is sixty five or seventy five million. Or I know the release clause is low. It was that the wages. It's, it's the play. The, I mean, if the agent we, fee. Yeah. Well, it's the agent fee. It's the rights fee. I mean, it's it's all the stuff on top of it. But yes, we could ensure ourselves the ability to negotiate with the player with the release clause. But the player has to want to come, and the player, the player needs to want to come. And uh, he, I think he he wants to play. He he wants his next move to be to the absolute top of Europe, um, which we're not at at the moment. Even if we finish top four and have Champions League, I don't see him coming. That would I, I would buy every piece of merchandise in the club shop that has his name on it if he came. That's my promise to Arsenal. So I'll sell my Mustang. To help finance the deal. And do you think they're going to take you up on that? Uh, you know, you never know. Uh, with the bl- with the black accent package, they might. I, even with Odegaard being his buddy, I I, I mean that that's the one thing that keeps me from saying it's it is completely impossible. But you know, in this day and age, who? I mean, do you really go? to a, a team that's been out of Europe and is just getting back in to play with your buddy as opposed mm. to, I mean, he could have gone to Real Madrid last year to play with his buddy before he came on loan to us. Actually, he was on loan. He was on loan as well. Uh, so that doesn't make sense. All right, the people have spoken. I think they said number one first. It's such and a so, touching moment, by the way. Number one, this is me meeting Mike. Mike meeting me at Huntington train station on the 1st of November, 2021. Get your tissues ready, people. This is emotion. It's all the emotion. <laughs> How you doing, I'm Mike. Oh, I'm good. Hi. Hi. Good to see you. The mother of his child. Aww. <laughs> what a wonderful child it is. Yes. It is. It, you know, it's... There you go, people. I thought you'd be more excited to see me, honestly. I thought you would... I was picturing a situation where you, like, rise up out of the chair and come running to me. And we, and we have, like... Levitate. You know, that, that dramatic music playing and... and uh, and and it just didn't happen. So, f you. Yes. <laughs> right. Fuck video number two. Again. Video number two is me taking the shot. They all give me unicorn stuff. Oh, this is the greatest. <sighs> so there's two videos, one 10 seconds each. The first part and the second part. But I've only just found the second part. So this is me, and this is in my God Manchester Park, and it's all full of people. And I just decided to say, and Alan's going, and I'm going, Alan, Alan. Anyway, oh, so Alan is here. okay. I was trying to figure out who Alan was. Alan is the uh, the unicorn, uh, named after um, uh, this know. is meaningful. I don't know why I call him Alan. Anyway, here we go. You ready? This is good. Oh, I love Sean's laugh though. It is it's it's the giggle's pretty funny. I do like that. <laughs> oh dear. It's, uh it's when sometimes when we're in a busy shopping center we park the van in a multi-story car park and there's people around. As I'm going backwards out the van, I will I'll scream and hold on to the van and go, No, minibus, minibus, no, no, minibus. <laughs> oh, good times. It's a beautiful oh. area. So uh, you know, now that you have his the license plates and now that you can can you know, circula- circulate or, you know, zoom in on exactly where he lives. You should go visit the man. He uh, he needs company. Um, his mother's there, kind of sometimes. That's actually a trip to what it, what it's based on. The the uh, it is based on uh, Howard. Howard. The station did a terrible thing. Jared didn't. 
pick us up. 10 o'clock came and went. Nobody called. Nobody came. Howard? So yes, my, my Jewish mother is directly based off of Howard Stern's mother. Uh, that was a good I used to watch that. I used to like him, but now he's a bit of a prig. Oh, no. He, no he's, he's the best entertainer of all time. He is... Uh, since I started doing podcasts, my entire self-effacing, stupid, idiot, say things you normally wouldn't say to other people attitude is directly lineated from, from Howard Stern. He is the greatest entertainer of any kind in the history of the world, in my, in my opinion. And when he dies, I will have the reaction that so many other people have when anyone else dies, like Betty White. Oh! Oh my gosh. John Madden recently died. Famous announcer and, and commentator. And obviously, if you play video games, you know who John Madden is. And I hadn't heard anything from him in 10 years. I thought he had died a long time ago. And then they announced, <laughs> then they announced that he died. And I'm like, and people were like going absolutely nuts over it. And I'm like, I'm like, I thought he died five, six years ago. I mean, this doesn't change my day at all. I, I'm sorry. I feel bad for his family. But like, how are you so affected by it? But Look, I shouldn't complain about people being emotionally attached to things. I've, I'm emotionally attached to plenty of things. But when Howard Stern dies, that's going to be sad for me. For me, it's when Billy Connolly dies. Billy Connolly? Will, uh, yeah. My the, favorite uh, person. The Scottish comedian? Yes. I hmm. love everything about him. The man's, I just finished his audio book. He had a, a show sad. over here once. I think he took oh. a, I think it was head of the class and Howard Hessman, who also just died in the last two from WKRP in Cincinnati. Also had no idea that that guy was still alive. So when he died, it was really no, no no skin off my back. But I think he did a show, and then he disappeared from the show, and they replaced him with Billy Connolly, if I remember correctly. He did do a show called Head of the Class. He came in when it, for one of the series, and then he got his own series where he was a teacher. Do you... Yeah, th this is a good question, and and uh, and you know we got a little a, a few more minutes. Like, whose death recently had the most impact on you, or do you get impacted when, you know, famous people who you never met or had any kind of personal relationship with, other than no. maybe you had a personal relationship through their music or their acting or their comedy or whatever, like, does it really affect you that much for no, more I than a day? For more than okay. a day, like, like God, this is weird. Like, like I don't. Like Howard Stern dying will affect me. I'll be very sad that he's gone. But by the time he dies, probably he won't have been like actively producing content. So it won't. So I can always go back and just listen to his old stuff. So it'll affect me. But I'm not going to be walking around depressed for like a week or so about it. Like he, like it, you know. Like the only one that affected me was David Rocastle. There was a. I was driving down the Contra with the M11 when that happened, when I heard it on the radio, and there was there was a little tear or two, and I was really sad about it. But when Prince died, that that made me angry because I wanted more music from him. Other than that, I, I was ice so. skating with my daughter, who was like four at the time, or five or, the, or seven at the time, or something like that, when we heard that Michael Jackson had died. And and I, I I guess the method of death has to do with it, because if it's like like Betty White dying, John Madden dying, old like okay it was it was coming but like a drug overdose like oh well i will say and this goes to something we talked about last year last last year chris cornell dying threw me for a loop a little bit i was i was on vacation it was like a day or two i think before the fa cup final um and uh danny devito and uh just because it was so unexpected like same with uh, Bob Saget, although I was never really a huge Bob Saget fan, so I, I was just more surprised by it uh, than anything else. But it doesn't like just sit with me for months at a time where I'm like, oh, I miss Bob Saget. <laughs> no, people I know die. Let's go. Uh, yeah, so I've had a few of my friends die in recent years. Last night, uh, um, James. No, Joe Rogan did, dies of COVID. Adam I'm not. I'm not. I'm not wishing that on anybody. And and I heard today that God forbid the uh, the, the Queen has COVID now. And uh, that's worrying. That is ninety five, looking frail. And yeah, ninety five and COVID. You, you really should be on high alert. But uh, she's a lizard anyway, so they'll just um, she'll just uh, shed her skin and be fine. How do you? I am a royalist. I do like the royal family. I, I was just about to ask you, like, how do you feel about the about the royal? Like, like, is it a big? Is it a big I get thing? annoyed when people slag off the royal family because they're jealous. I'd love to be king. I'd sort this country out in an afternoon. But 
yeah, they've uh, people go, but it's what separates us from being American. I don't think yeah, many. I British learned a long time ago to make fun of the of the uh, of the crown or the or, or royalty. Uh, I mean, the one thing I will say though is, I have a trip planned for April. Ooh. Uh, over back to my adopted homeland, um, and I just when. And hopefully it's a far time from now. When the queen passes, it's going to like shut down the country for weeks, right? It will do. Like her mum, the queen mum, she was, I think, 100, 101 or 102 when she died. But the queen, I mean, that should be all right. I mean, if, as long as it's there's, whether it's Omicron, Omicron B or Omicron Delta, there's the three versions at the moment. That's fine. It's just like having a bloody cold. Just fucking put, put an extra hat on, take a limb, sip, love, you'll be fine. But but when there will be a, t- I mean, when the time does come, and 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 it happens, and Prince Charles either takes the he throne will. or abdicates it, so no, that he'll William, take it. So he'll have it about ten years, and uh, then he'll give it to his son. The uh, I mean, the country will. I mean, sport will will shut down for a while. I would imagine. I mean, I no, just, there's no there's no, no track record because the last time it happened, life wasn't like life is now. I mean, no, it was I mean, the. 1940s, so yeah, 1947, so, I think, something like that. The year yeah, my mom so, was born. So will it? I mean, that, my my point is, she better not pass away right before April first, um, because I want to go to those games. If it's going to happen, let's have it be after, uh, hopefully well after. So um, my mum's got pictures of my brother meeting the Queen, a photo of them, and my brother and the Pope together. Russ, where do you live? Russ Morgan in the chat. I for some reason I thought Russ lived in uh, Canada, and uh, I don't know why. No, I, I think, think that. I think it's England or the UK because he had a, an MG Metro. Yeah, and I, I, I mean, well. I've certainly uh, certainly noticed that. But for some reason I thought I, I don't know why. Maybe maybe he's in uh, in a Facebook group for the Toronto group or something like that. I, I for some reason I always pictured him as being uh, Canadian. But Russ uh, sounds like someone from the Midlands. Oh, Brady's banana says 1952 she became queen. I know it was sometime after World War One. It was a long time ago. A Rover uh, Metro. So yeah, okay. I, don't, I don't want I don't want to be over there for a shutdown. That's uh, you know. Oh, it just be a, a week of, of mourning, but nothing will shut down. Shops will stay open. Every, all the sport will carry on. They'll just have yet another excuse. Uh, Russ says he's everywhere. It'll just be another excuse you for think? people. To I mean, if, they, if, if the queen, if they if they do. A funeral on the Saturday. There, you you don't you think they'll play football that day? Oh no! I thought you meant during the whole week. No, they'll just well, make sure that it's done. She'll have to have a procession through through the through London, usually from the um the the Buckingham Palace through to wherever to St Paul's. St Paul's is it somewhere like that? Yeah. Sorry, I'm not laughing at that at that at that thought. I was laughing at, at that. <laughs> That's what I was laughing at. Not the uh, the the. The thought of a procession. Not in Alabama one. Brady's banana put. So I remember 77 sports day at school. We got special badges for 25 years. Yeah, I was born in 1970. So I remember having the Silver Jubilee um, at the front of my house in Norfolk Road in Huntingdon. They all had tables out. My God, you couldn't walk alone in daylight in Huntingdon. Now you get stabbed up, mugged and left for dead. Uh, Don had the MG Metro. Oh, Don had an MG Don, Metro. Not, not Russ. Oh, so we got a couple of Metro brothers. Don... And, and Russ, so I learned to drive want, in, you, in the Metro. Do you get a, free, one, you get a free subscription to the newspaper, the Metro, with all the excellent on-point transfer yeah. uh, yeah. updates that they provide? Certainly do. Right, before we go, let's play one more video, people. This is the one you've all been waiting for. <laughs> Here we go. I was forced to do. I would say, if Man City came in with 70 million, I think that's probably fair. I just don't think that you know, Conte is the manager, he likes to press, 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 press. You have to run when you um, play for Conte. As Kane got that in him, and Eric Dyer got the technical... I thought that, that was going to be the, I that was gonna be the COVID video. The COVID yeah, I'm going to go and see if I can find the COVID video. You you talk to the, the people, that, and I'll, I'll go and find it. Danny's, this is called pulling back the curtain. Danny's just showed you how the sausage is made. <laughs> <laughs> I hate that expression. Uh, yes, how Found the sausage it. is made. He actually showed you the sausage. Being made. 
the first thing Mike did when he came in the house, he stopped, put his arms out and went, this is where the magic happens. <laughs> so I, it's did created. Do, I did do that. <laughs> you know, I, I pictured it a little differently, but then once I saw it, I was like, okay, this is here. Because everything's very really small over here. And then I said, I need to see the bathtub. I need to yeah. see that. That, was where <laughs> the, that is really where the mag magic happened. Um, I highly, you know, when, when you meet your podcasting heroes and you get to podcast with them side by side, it's, uh, <laughs> it's, it's something special. So, you ready for the for the COVID test video? Uh, yeah, th I think this is how this is how Danny and my visit ended, and so I think this is how the show today should end. Uh, Dan, he didn't ask me to do a COVID test prior to determine whether we should be together. We spent the afternoon and evening together, and then he said, "I just need to know whether I'm going to die or not." <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, also, that was the sixth one. For the first five, he put up his bum. I said, no. <laughs> I, I, I forgot how to do it. I, you, you know. right, here we go, people. It's, uh, it's not a pretty sight. I wasn't sick until I started this. I pick up the extraction tube. Mike's doing a COVID test. Oh I had to put it in his tickly tonsils and stick it up his nose to poor blokes dying. Fabric tip of the swab is extracted. Oh, that's after I stuck it up my nose, though. Did it. <laughs> Be muted. Yeah, um, I, you you started doing it before I could get the camera ready. Oh, I thought you actually had the. the yeah, no, I was no, crying no. after that as well. So, well, I did one, and then Sean said, oh, "Let me do one too." I went. She's shoving it all down. I could feel it on my tongue. So she went. She went. You fucker! I was hoping I was going to yeah, mate. And I said, "You better take it out because I'm about to sneeze." And that was uh, about as bad as I got. See what see what the uh, the punters have said to that. Uh, poor Carl. Yes. Oh, Russ is from Windsor. Oh, I need to bought a car from Windsor. No, it wasn't. Speaking of the Queen. Ascot, I need to bought a car from. Go on. Well, I just said speaking of the Queen. It's from Windsor. Isn't that... Uh, is that not where it's from? Us two gaming. Mike doesn't game. I've not played yeah. anything in months. I don't game. I don't, uh, I don't, have, I don't have time for such foolish endeavors. Yeah, I'm thinking of getting back into Two Point Hospital, and I might even twitch it. Now I've got two monitors. You took a bath in Danny's house, Mike, in the first 10 minutes. I, I need a, a shit and I need a bath. Clear a path. It, it was a, it was a, uh, a, a, a okay. tongue bath, but, but it happened. So, yes, oh. it, was very, it was a very romantic day. It was the perfect way to start off November. Uh, you know, fortunately, I wasn't too hungover from 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 uh, my Halloween pursuits. I think the night before, no, no, it was the night after I went to a Charlton game with with Tommy Boy. But uh, anyway, a good trip, and another one will be had with my son in April, assuming nothing weird happens to the Queen and or to COVID. Um, that will be gone by then. It's all already gone by over church area. They've got rid of absolutely everything. Well, like I've said the whole time, just fucking grit your teeth and get on with it. <laughs> this has been the Sunday roast. Thanks for joining us uh, again. If you if you got any topics, put them in the put them in the chat uh, or in the in the comments. Next week is going to be what Sunday the twenty seventh. Um, I have a pretty fun weekend coming up next weekend, so we'll we'll be have, we can talk about it on uh, on Sunday, and uh, same time, same place next week. Yes, indeed. Where Ooh, do people find you? Week. What I say where they can find you. Not like you're doing any podcast, is it? Uh, well, here. Could, do you still have the uh, the the shirt video? Yeah. Well, then, if you're here, if I if I play it, then we can you can talk over it, can't you? If, if, I, if we unmute that. ourselves, oh, I never knew you could do that. Oh right, yeah, uh, shirt video. <laughs> Go to GoonersVCancer.com. Peeky, 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 boo. That's John Lukic. That's Lee Dixon. That's Alan Smith. And Michael Thomas. I had somebody DM me last night. A little bit louder. And he said, I will offer you. can't hear you. you. But I'll wait. The universal cancer died. Donate. Donate. 
can't see it, can't we? Right? V- by, vaguely. Can anyone hear him anyway? So, uh, whose so, idea yeah, is so, it to do that? That's brilliant. Uh, you know, I I, um, I took four years of editing uh, in, <laughs> in, in uni um, and uh, and came up with that. Go to GunnersVCancer.com, please. Uh, we're, I, I haven't really been giving too much effort towards, uh, towards that uh, because I've been busy lately, but we need to get to 500 entries and we will then raise $12,500 for the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society. Last night, somebody DM'd me offering me 250 quid for the shirt and saying, <laughs> and saying he normally wouldn't offer that much, uh, but uh, he's not 100% sure that it's not fake. And I said, well, A, it's 250 quid will get you 13 entries. You're welcome to, 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 to uh, enter. And if you want to know whether it's real or not, just talk to Alan Smith. He's the one that put the shirt together. So I haven't heard back from him since then. Whose idea was it to do that with the, the players in the right order and the co- mixed up with the commentary in the right order? That was my idea, and and I finally I asked Alan uh, about it, and he's like, I'm, I'm like, I can get Lee, I can get Alan because they regularly participate in the charity, but uh, I haven't I hadn't talked to Michael Thomas since he was on the podcast with us, uh, which was almost two years ago. He and doesn't I really do talked. much, Michael Thomas, does he? Uh, um, no, no. Wife. I mean, he he did about we had him on. After he came on Twitter, we had him on, and then about three other podcasts had him on, and then he disappeared off Twitter again uh, after he took the job. Well but uh, but I didn't know how Is to get Luke, but, but Alan Smith said, I'll get Lukey involved. And three months later, there was the shirt. It's a thing of beauty, and um, and it's going to go and raise a lot of money for Leukemia uh, and Lymphoma Society. And you can win it with just $25, which is about 18 quid. So in any case been another fun roast i'm gonna go have dinner when you say roast someone put something in here um who do they put uh great roasting guys i meant as in a sunday roast not as an american where the people roast each other or do I you think, think people that, think it could be either or both i think that's what mark meant i mean at, at times we'll roast people when when it's when it's necessary when we'll yeah, roast i didn't think people. of that until after i come up with a name yeah no it's it, it could be any of those things but uh I'm going to know how now have my version of a Sunday roast, which is going to be shrimp in egg white in an omelet. I would With... rather lick an empty saucepan than eat that shit. Well, that's my 275 calorie dinner for tonight. So... I'm going to go and uh, I've got it in the top oven. I'm going to go and open the oven and see what state the chicken's in and maybe pick it apart, put the white bits in a bowl and put it in the fridge, and the rest of it, leave it in there, and I don't know, throw it out for the birds. <laughs> Enjoy your salmonella. I will do. Hopefully it's never cooked a chicken before, but I think, I think a medium-sized chicken, an hour and 40 minutes, plus cool-down time of another hour, I think it'll be fine. I think it's, uh, I'm sure it's dead. All right, tell people one more time where they can, what work with all the podcasts, where the uh, website is to go for that charity shirt. Yeah, go to GoonersVCancer.com. Follow us on Twitter at Gooners, at the Gooners Pod and at GoonersVCancer. And, uh, and you'll find out fun, incredible things. And when the, when the no. Arsenal finances come out, that's when we're going to start doing a podcast because I'll have nothing. Spreadsheet, more. baby. I'll, I'll be spreadsheeting and talking out my ass for weeks at a time. So. Can't wait. All right. Thank you very much to Mike and thank you very much to everybody in the chat. ABW will probably be back on Wednesday with me, Jeff Arsenal, Gary, don't waste the tweet, and maybe one or two others. Another one, two, three, maybe one other. And if anybody in Portugal sees Josh there, uh, point him in the direction of the UK and give him a shove. You don't want him in your country. That boy's travel. Thank you very much and good night. Come on, you gooners. <laughs>